Welcome to Podcasting What I Mean, hosted by Benita Cornu. Mr. Lauren White, he's going to take a hiatus for a while while he takes care of some things. But on this episode, we have Mr. Soul, Mr. Brian Owens in the house. And he's going to talk to us about what he has going on. He's not only just a soul singer, he's a creative ambassador. And by creative ambassador, I mean he is helping cultivate our young talent that's in the creative arts and not just in music, but in everything that's creative and that has to do with the arts. This man is, is definitely making St. Louis a better place for the artists and the creative types. And um, his journey and his story to get to where he is now is definitely one that you need to hear and you need to listen to. So without further ado, let's check out podcasting what I, I mean. I can hear you. <laughs> You're right there. You're right there. I'm going to try to be pretentious today. <laughs> that goes no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I got to... I, I have a lot... I. I have a lot going on, but it's in this. It's it's directionally in the same okay. direction. So okay. it's not like it's not it it it, it, it it's an octopus. <laughs> I mean, there's eight arms, <laughs> at but least. Still, but they're still connected to one source. You. Yeah, it, exactly. If you're everywhere, you can't be nowhere. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. How's that? Good. You ready to start? When I stop looking for stuff. Guys started sending stuff. I'm trying to be all over the place. You can't be no place. Hello, oh, welcome. Come on in. We've got a lot to talk about today. A yeah. very, very interesting guest. And am I interesting? Oh, oh, absolutely. From from top to bottom, inside and out. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Well, what's most important is who you are and what you bring. This is Brian Owens, everyone, and um, uh, many of you probably know him. If you if you have any experience in the music industry, audience-wise or artists, you know Brian here in the St. Louis area. But he's also known internationally. Well, well-rounded individual. What what am I going to say? Um, this is a journey that is an amazing story, and you continue to craft that story. All right. Okay. I like that. You 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 haven't stopped. You're not stagnant. You're moving and growing and building. Yes. Right. Yes. Tell I like us, that. D- d- tell us a little bit about your your roots. Your where did this all start? Music. Um, with my dad, growing up in church and hearing really good singers. Because I was blessed to grow up hearing really good singers. Where was that? What church? So I went to a church over in um, Centerville. It's called Centerville Church of Christ. Oh. And so I grew up in an acapella vocal tradition. Yes. And so. When I say I grew up hearing singers, I grew up hearing like yeah. people who could have been professional but chose otherwise. Like mm-hmm. my dad was one of those people. Really? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. My dad easily could have had a career. He may not have lived long. What do you mean? But he would have had a career. It would have taken its toll on him. You? Oh, say? absolutely. And he knows that, which is why he didn't pursue it. Okay. Um, which is which is which is kind of like a, a kind of cool parallel that I'm now doing what he probably would have had the opportunity to do and now we're doing it together. Sure. So so that's cool. But I mean I I mean I grew up on Pastor's Kid, grew up singing in church, you know, I was an athlete. That was my first love. Music was not my first love. Oh, it wasn't? Oh no, growing up. Like basketball was my first love. Wait. Yeah, you could probably shoot a hoop, but you know, a yeah, I wasn't bad. Like I was, I was, I was decent. I was a good player. I mean, at, at least decent enough to where you know I was looking at playing in college, like D two, mm-hmm. um, and you know. But basketball is just one part of who you are. That experience with your dad, you've actually recorded with him. Taking yeah, it, taking yeah. it beyond just at church. Yeah, you've made. Yeah, you've made. Uh, something out of vinyl well yeah i mean it was and that's you know recent if you you know consider seven to ten years recent but growing up i really didn't sing with my dad my brother so i have a i have two older brothers one six years older than me one seven years older than me they sang with my dad in church yeah. i never sang with my dad at church okay. even when i was singing at the same time with my dad where i was old enough to sing like they sang with him i sang with them yeah yeah. Was it was it was what's that about? Is there any particular I mean, thing behind it? No, that? it's just no, like it's just, just like I was younger, you okay. know, and I was into different stuff. 
Okay. My dad had a song that he sang that everybody loved. And as my older brother, you know, got older, he would sing that song with my dad. And mm-hmm. I would not, I wasn't going to do it. His voice is too high for me, okay. first of all. Um, but yeah, like, I think as I got into my adult life, it actually happened on accident. I was just doing, I was doing a show at the Sheldon and this was like around maybe 20, like 2007, maybe. I don't even know if I had kids yet. Oh. And um, I had my dad come out and sing A Change Is Gonna Come because I knew that was a song that we both knew. Yes. And it was the first time that we had sung that song together. And then after that, we started doing more stuff together. Eventually, we did a video and did a single for Change to Come in 2013, and I didn't think anything of it. I thought it was just, we were doing it for kids right cancer. Oh, okay. So so the, the video that we did for Change is Gonna Come was really just about getting people to download the, the single. So, uh, so I didn't think anything about the video. Okay. And then in 2017, a guy that I've never met before in my life named Owen Bucknell <laughs> found the video on YouTube, put it on Facebook, and within like, two weeks it had 10 million views. Wow. Cause up until that point, I think it had like maybe like 10, 20,000 views or something like that. And then that like, that's what really started to kick off, you know, some of the other stuff. I mean, and, 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 you know, prior to that, I would have my dad on like, I did an album called Moods and Messages in 2012. And my dad did a song on that. And then mm-hmm. I did an album called Preach and mm-hmm. he did a song on that. But it wasn't, it wasn't a thing where I was looking like, oh, maybe I should just do something with, with my dad exclusive, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. put, you know, my solo stuff kind of on hold and just do stuff with him. And that's kind of where I'm right now. But you're doing something big coming up with him. Duets with dad. What's yeah, that? I mean, we just, it's crazy how things work out. We, um, we were going to release the album this fall. And so we did a show this past father's day at the two hill, oh, nice. which was really great. And, Good we spot. Got, That's yeah, great, yeah, yeah, great yeah, yeah. But we got we were on the city music series for the Today Show with Hoda and Jenna, um, the the Friday before Father's Day, mm-hmm. and so like what we're finding is that the song resonates with people. Yes, it does. But as people begin to find out what's behind the song in our relationship, that's really starting to resonate, and I think it's just the time for it. Like, what's for, behind for, that? That you you got my interest peaked. You say what's behind it in the relationship with you and my your dad. dad. My dad will always be my father, in rela- relationally, but functionally. In my early twenties, he stopped being my parent and started being my pastor, and that was phenomenal. Okay, it was phenomenal. No, 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 no. Like it was like that's what I needed. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying, he's my. He like he okay. he is my he will he's my father, be, like because ge- like DNA genetically all that kind of stuff physically he is my father. But what I needed then was because I was out there I was I was a mess. Um, can't imagine. That. I needed. <laughs> yeah, I that's, can't that's what Grace will do. Um, I needed a I needed a pastor. Okay, and that's what. You know, he he was. And so that is kind of like the core of our relationship. Like it's more more so than being my dad. He's like my brother in Christ. Wow. And so and so that supersedes kind of the other mm-hmm. aspects of our relationship. So when we sing together, you know, it, it's you know, it's pretty dope. Cause the other thing too is, is that he can really sing. Okay. And okay. and people who see the video, they see one they see one aspect sure. of what he can do vocally. Cause when we recorded that, he had signing stuff going on. Like he wasn't even hundred percent. So now what's cool is is me, you know, going from like father to like having him as a pastor to like now having him as an artist that wow. I'm getting that I'm getting to produce. Mm-hmm. That's fun. Sounds like there could be that spiritual connection that influences your musical performance. Oh, that influences as well. everything. Okay. Like for both of us, faith is the highest priority. Mm-hmm. You know, above anything. Should be. So we share that. So, you know, 
re- just that kind of being the the driving force of our relationship, mm-hmm. it makes everything else really easy. Singing together is easy. Does he have any con- Well, obviously he didn't because you are doing it and it seems he's right there supporting you. But you have made your mark outside of the church and the, the religious community in terms of your music. I love that you said that. I love that you said that. Uh-oh. I love that you well, said I'll that. Say. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting how you position that thought. I made my mark outside of the church and religious community. He would say, and I would say, that that isn't necessarily the case. Okay. Um, people always ask me, well, when are you going to do a gospel album? It, and my first response is, is, well, have you heard the album that I did? Just because, it, just because it's in a parable mm-hmm. doesn't mean it's not proclaiming the gospel. Okay. It just may mean that it's for those who need it implicitly and not explicitly. And so my whole career has been based around this idea that, you know, it's not that I don't promote the gospel. Okay. Um, and actually, and actually, there's a greater burden because um, I actually have to allow my life to be the thing through which people can see the power of it. Yes. So it's not that like, hey, I sing all these gospel songs and therefore, you know, I'm a crit. No, it's like I sing, I sing songs about loving my wife, mm-hmm. loving my God and loving my family. Okay. I sing songs, I sing there? songs about building, building community with a Christian worldview. Like I, that, that's what I create you know, not just music, but film. That's what I create content around. So, like, I haven't done anything outside outside of the church. Number one, because I am the I'm a part of the church. Okay. Like, now, do I have I done a a, a full album of gospel of music that is like explicitly gospel? No. no. Do I feel like I need to? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you no. don't need to. No. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah, you've done well enough uh, otherwise. And and that's one of the things, a couple of things you've said there that make me have have different thoughts. One is you you talk about creativity and and I just I'm going to go down to something life creative STL. Yeah. Tell me about that and, and how that plays into your sense or your your commitment to community uh, through the arts. So. I'll give you the the boilerplate, right? So Life Creative STL was designed to be what we call a sustainable creative ecosystem. And the ecosystem by definition is, it's like an organism, Mm -hmm. not an organization. Mm -hmm. Like it has everything, everything that it needs to thrive, to grow and to develop is within it itself. Mm -hmm. And so Life Creative STL is a collection of really, really strong partners and you know, on the for-profit and nonprofit side. Mm-hmm. And the aim was to develop leaders using the creative space. That's really what we, we want to do. Because ultimately, because ultimately for me, everything is about discipleship. Like, like the platform that I use to do it is irrelevant. It's all about discipleship. So um, when I started it, it kind of came out of this sense of, sense of like, I always wanted to be able to use the creative space and any revenue that's generated to go back into yes. places that have that kind of mission. And then living in Ferguson, when everything happened in 2014, I was like, okay, so how do I, and I know how the community responds and I know how my church is responding, but how do I respond given whatever platform I may have? Yeah. And so yeah. it actually was kind of like things were providentially guided to place me in a situation where I started mentoring these kids at Confluence Academy Old North. Yes. But I'm like, I wanted to do stuff in Ferguson. Yes. But I got guided to Confluence Academy Old North, only come to find out that like I had, a pro- we would develop a program. It was a therapeutic songwriting program with Maryville University, who I had a connection with. And, you know, we had six students that work with music, you know, music therapy students to make songs yes. and, and all this kind of stuff. Well, out of that program of that six, two of them, like I kept, they like, they kept coming back. Like, even if we went 
to do another group of kids, those kids stay with me. So I had to develop new opportunities, new experiences for them, new things, and started adding more people to them, right, as God would send them to me, only to find out that those kids, the two kids were from Ferguson. Oh. They moved because they were living in Canfield. And when everything went down, uh-huh. it got so crazy that the mother moved them from Ferguson to the city. Oh, usually you see it going the other way. Right. So I end up, the, the, the genesis of this was me working with these two kids and seeing how it would grow, it would grow and develop. You know, I, I got asked to do stuff from the St. Louis Cardinals. I would bring in these kids. I got asked to do stuff from the Pulitzer. I bring in these kids. When I started, you know, I ran the in unison program at the Symphony yes. for like ten years. Yes, you did. And really developed the the mentoring program with the college students there, and that were music majors. And so I started taking them on tour with me. Like it's just like all this kind of stuff was happening organically out of the platforms that God had given me. Mm-hmm. And then we started naming it. And it wasn't yeah. until like two years ago that we were like, oh, this is an eco, this is an ecosystem, right? What we're building is we're building a kind of like places and spaces that are predicated on this philosophy of we're going to take whatever success we have and use it as a platform for the next generation. But we want them to be leaders, and not not just see, artists, not just creatives. Sure. We want them to be leaders. And you see a deficit in leaders of leadership. Don't we all? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I mean, I, I mean, and and here's the thing: Can you ever have too many? No. Like leaders. No. Especially if they're servant leaders. Especially if they, you know, just people who know how to like walk into any culture and make it better. As opposed to making it worse. How many children are you serving? Is this is this a Monday through Friday, no, Saturdays, man, not, or every yeah. come a couple of months you're mm. in, engaged in something? It's not a program. It's a pathway. Okay. I didn't look for nobody. God sent me everybody that I had. I would say, you know, we've, someone's we've, interested. Yeah, yeah. We've taken we've taken various forms over the past, you know, since 2014. Okay. Okay. But I think the last two years we've really locked into like what it really is supposed to be, and so. Since the pandemic, we've serviced about 10, 10 to 12. Mm-hmm. They were all like, you know, um, young adult age. Sure. And we have great partners, like um, formerly American Portfolios, not so sick, out of New York. So they helped us fund a program where we were able to give five creatives, you know, $1,000 a month oh. for a stipend, 250 that goes in the savings account, an investment advisor. And then we would pay for all the project stuff that they needed and wanted to do. Beautiful. Right. So 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 the ecosystem was about, first of all, building out, building out the the outcome, because mm-hmm. it's it's one thing to start a bunch of programs with kids in middle school. Yeah. But you don't have any idea of how to get them to an outcome. So instead of us building from the top up, we I mean, the bottom mm-hmm. up, we built from the top down. Oh, gotcha. So we started with this is what the outcome. So I got these young creatives who now our position to like you know start companies with me like lead other lead other lead things in other places yes and so now the pathways because i don't like programs programs have a start and a finish pathways are they're taking you someplace good point yeah so the pathways that we're working in now like are re they 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 actually have very succinct purposing in them. Sure. We know how they can function. And that's and, and so like that's what the ecosystem is now. It's a it's projects, pathways, and partners. That's what we have. Gotcha. And and the whole point of those is economic de- growth, community development, workforce development, all that is just baked into the organic way in which we want to develop leaders and disciple them and mentor. And you're started this in Ferguson. When I think of um, Ferguson and I know your involvement there, I have this feeling that you have said inside of yourself, I'm home, come on in, welcome. You know, yeah. making making Ferguson a place of, of positive versus what we saw so significantly on national television yeah. over a period. Yeah. And it's like, hey, we real here. This is what we do. Come on in and be a part of it. We let other people steal the narrative. 
Okay. And I, and I think that, it, you know, whatever side you sit on, I'm like, we let other people steal the narrative and we didn't get an opportunity to say, let's explore all sides to this. Yes. But, but we also have a viewpoint, thoughts, opinions. And, and so being able to, you know, stay, that's the first thing that I was challenged with in terms Staying of like, of, of, of like, so Lord, okay, I'm praying. What do I do? Stay. That was your answer. Yeah. Stay. Don't go anywhere. And then as you're staying, um, be faithful and committed to, you know, developing reasons and opportunities for other people to sure. stay. So right now we have like seven houses on my street. So, yeah. What do you mean? Seven houses. So we have seven houses on our street. Well, if you want to, if you want to build community, you got to occupy. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, so what happened was, you know, instead of first trying to get a building, cause I went through all that and we were, we, we had a building that was given to us. We had a nonprofit for a while oh. and had a building given to us. That was a whole, I'm like, I learned that I never want to do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, but what happened was, is all my young creatives, it was like, it was important for them to be close. Okay. And so like, we, we, had, we had two houses on the street to begin with. And then my mom bought the house next door to me yes. because my cousin who was going to run the nonprofit had moved to St. Louis. So she bought the house. So he lived in that house. And then as things became available on the block because of the American portfolios who we were partnering with and we had these funds, we could begin to subsidize and provide things for these young creatives that also allowed us to like put them in community with one another. So that led to we're going to rent this house and then we rented another house and then we rented another house and to their families or no no to them, to, their, space. to them to no they live there so i have so i have like one two three four five i have like five six creatives that live on my street who are part of our ecosystem oh my and that's so, the way to do so, it and so and so in us doing that what, i always tell people i don't know how to build a business but i know how to build a family yes I don't know how to run a business, but I know how to run a family. That's the now that's what's closest to my sensibilities. So in running a family, it's like I just need to create we need to create this this space where we can be in contact with one another. And one, I think that's what helped us greatly in the pandemic. You were close. Oh, they were already on the block. A yeah, lot of them yeah, were already yeah, on the and block. And protective of one yeah, another. Yeah. And so that's that how so cool. that's how we started to to build it out. But it's like that's the groundwork for then now going out. Mm -hmm. You know, we're building out a campus with Beyond Housing. That's going to be a creative sanctuary with it, yeah, um, and get involved with film and television stuff that we want to bring to St. Louis. Me doing projects, them doing projects, sure. and it's all within the same the same modeling that now we can have another space. Now we can start working with these middle and high school kids and bringing them along. Cause that's how you make an army. There you go. <laughs> and that's what we want. I mean, I want to, I want an army of creative leaders and nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Because that's who you are. Why not pass that on and, and share that uh, with yeah. the next generation? Yeah. I, I'm looking at thinking about Ferguson too, and the music that the concerts and performances that you produced and brought to Ferguson, including uh, your involvement with another native, Mr. McDonald. Oh, Michael. Michael, yeah, Michael yeah, yeah, McDonald. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's my guy. The, talk about that experience, yeah, what that was yeah. like. Yeah, and his him. son, too. And his son. Dylan. Dylan's a good friend of mine. We, he Is was, he, he still there no, in Dylan, Ferguson? No, Dylan lives in Nashville, but okay. he was on my Soul of Cash okay. album. He was just here with the, because um, I run the music series at the World Chess Hall of Fame. Yes. He was just here, he was just here in June. Yes. Um, I met Mike through Dan and Dana Duncan, who are longtime Ferguson, mm -hmm. you know, folks, and that's Mike's best friend. And in 2014, I did the concert on the parking lot of my church uh, called Hill Ferguson, and they were there. And Dan had, was working at that time. He's since retired, but he's working with, I think it was the NACDA, um, the um, Council of, yeah, Council of Drug. Drugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And they were doing their gala. We should get that right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were doing their gala in 2015, mm. and they were bringing Mike in to do the gala. Oh, and so yeah. Dana was like, you should get Brian, you should see if Brian, you should get Brian to open up for Mike. 
And he called me. He was like, hey, you ever heard of you heard of Michael McDonald? And I was like, are you kidding me, bro? <laughs> from what's happening like I, like <laughs> like yeah like i yeah, yeah i've heard of mike mcdonald and i knew he was from ferguson and he was like well he's coming here you know would you uh, like to open for him i was like yeah <laughs> he's like i know you know it won't be a whole lot no of money brainer. i was like i'll pay you like what do you mean like to open for mike <laughs> and so i opened for him got to sing with him and then he was like if you ever need anything let me know and i reached out to Dan, I was like, I really love to go on tour with him. If he has any slots. Oh, and I was like, and, and, you, you and I would, there. and my brother, Kim Poteet, who at that time was Sterling Bank, um, sponsored me to go out on the road with Michael McDonald. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, and ever, and ever since then, you know what I'm saying? It's been, you know, we good friends. You've done international trips with him or just. So just, so just, so just over here. So just in, in the States. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he recorded one of my songs with me. Oh. Which is on the Soul of Ferguson project. And um, we did the Sanborn sessions together with David Sanborn. He hooked me up. So now I'm really good friends with David Sanborn because Mike hooked me up with David there Sanborn. There you go. Well, see, that, that that's creative geniuses connecting and finding pathways. Well, they're creative geniuses. I'm creative. They're the geniuses. I'm not gonna throw. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Throw. I'm gonna move you to genius status. All right. How about that? If you do it, that's it, different. It, I'll move you to genius status. The the chess hall of fame. Yeah. I didn't know they did music there. I've been there for tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. Chess hall of fame is to me like one of the best. Shouldn't be kept secrets, secrets. in in this in this area. Well, I mean, what they, first of all, I their pro, the their profile in chess is ridiculous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like when we say that the World Chess Hall of Fame, it's not just a title. Like they literally are the center of chess for the world. Exactly. All these major tournaments, the World Chess Hall of Fame is is in in the you know the campus in the Central West End. So they've been doing a music series since the beginning. Since they opened, they've had a music oh, series yeah. because Rex okay. Singfield yeah. and his wife Jeannie Singfield are music jazz. music lovers, not just jazz. Not just jazz. Okay. Oh, like like Jeannie Singfield you know, is, you know, by and large responsible for the composition program that's at Mizzou. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they love music and the creation of music and concerts. And so when I first was introduced to that, it was me being asked to come and play, you know, so they have a, they have a chamber music series mm -hmm. that's more classical stuff. And then they have a non-chamber music series. And so Bjorn Ronheim, good friend of mine, plays with the symphony. He was, um, booking the series for I think for a couple years mm -hmm. when he got ready to you know step away and they want to and he wanted to bring somebody else in they split the series up so Brian Woods who's a very very accomplished you know concert pianist runs the chamber music and then I run the non-chamber music so I book 12 shows a year oh. but then I also have an additional role there as being a creative in residence and so I get to build new works around the exhibits that, wow. they, that they have there um using it as, as a platform and a place to engage young creatives in the city i call it like you know but, i want i want it to be the harlem for our renaissance what, Har what harlem was for the harlem renaissance i think that the campus and that space yes at, at, at the world chess hall of fame can be that for young creatives here so well I, i'm thinking what 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 music would you associate with the exhibits oh that's all kind i mean there's what, all kinds of ways that you I can mean, do that what title um well i just so so last year um they were celebrating the 50th anniversary of bobby fisher and boris Spassky, right yeah and so i got adam manis who is that dude in st louis when it comes to composition and i commissioned him to write a piece called 41 moves because that's how many moves it took for for uh, him to beat for for Bobby Fischer to beat Spassky in their in their final match, and so he wrote this thing called Forty One Moves. I got Keon Harold, I got Mastermind, and we created this basically this suite that was that was inspired by Bobby Fischer that match. So you know, I mean, there's so many different ways creatively that you can bring that kind of stuff in. This year, hmm. the the exhibit is called Sound Moves. And so for the show that I did in August, we redid 
the Adamantis compositions with music that's in the exhibit that may be chess inspired mm -hmm. or, you know, um, artists that musicians that, you know, have been inspired by and love chess. Like Ray Charles was an avid chess fan. Willie Nelson was an avid chess ah. chess player. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know. Uh, there's, way, there's ways to do it. Oh, the, and the, I just, the totally, way, totally ways to do it. Totally ways to do it, and I that's think, and know, that and when you're creative, you can find those ways, and that's what I love about being in that position because I get to make all these correlations for people. That's a way to do it. I'm thinking of titles, existing titles, and, and that's not the way you would do it. Well, and then I did something from Chess the Musical, which is a great musical, by the way. I saw that oh, at the okay. Muni. Like, okay. yeah, I'm, I mean, so there's all kind of ways to engage people, and then chess. To me, chess, chess, and music are the are the two most universal things that we have. Right, music is something that I can do with somebody. I don't, we, we don't even have to speak the same language. We don't have to be from the same place. We can sit down and start playing and we can, and we can have a conversation. Right. Chess is the same way. Just the moves. You can just, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's just the moves. You know what I'm saying? So chess, music, and faith to me are the three most transferable things universally that you can ever have. Wow. Let me just say this. I don't want to run out of time, but I want to know what is coming on the horizon for you. What do we need to promote for you? That's Help hard. Help you promote. That's hard, cause. You have, do you have any? I just, I feel like there's renaissance on the horizon and it's like so, it's not complicated, but it's, 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 it's dense. Like, you know, the, the things that our ecosystem are, are, are trying to do with these projects and these pathways and these, and these partnerships that we have is so much bigger than me as Brian Owens, the individual. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when it all comes to light, it's going to make so much more sense to people. Because when people think about I me mean, now, it's like if you're, if you're a person that has a bunch of letters after your name yeah. and people will spend their time trying to reconcile how all those things fit together. Yeah. Like, so you're a doctorate, but you got this and then you do this and then you're doing this over here. And it's like the best way to explain stuff to people is to show them. Mm -hmm. and, and all I can say is that in 2024, like everything that, we, that, that we've been, you know, building over the past 10 years is going to like come, come, to, come to the fore. The philosophy, the individuals, the, the creative strategies, the partnerships. Sure. Like it's all, I think, gonna come to bear in a way where people go, oh, I mean, that's one of the main reasons why I stopped doing a bunch of concerts in St. Louis, because I realized that my relationship to the city uh -huh. has to change in order for people to be, but be able to understand what the next move is. If I stay just Brian Owens, the singer, nobody's gonna get or understand the reasons and the purposes behind what this next move is that's coming up. But if I become the creative ambassador, that's why that's why I haven't performed at music at the intersection. But I'm the creative ambassador. Yes, you are. Right. That's why I'm the creative in residence at the World Chess Hall of Fame. I, I maybe I may do two shows a year there where I'm performing. That's why I'm not performing a lot in the city. Because I I, I want to engage the city around thought and thought and philosophy and placement as opposed to performance. Is it is it working? Are they listening? Are they coming into the fold? Or I mean, I'm on a, I'm on your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when, when was the last time anybody? When was the last time you saw me perform on on Fox Two? It, it you know it's been a while. And 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 really, the only time I did it was when I was doing stuff with my dad. But that was more so because nobody really heard my dad. Okay. Right. And okay. so 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 I'm just really excited for everyone to kind of see the launch and the birth of, you know, of God's favor in our lives. Cause I mean, I got the regional arts commission. Mm -hmm. I got M one bank mm -hmm. I have Maryville university. We have beyond housing. We have a major, like the largest financial services company now in the, in the nation with, with Osaic, um, all at the table with us. Helping us, help, helping us to build this out. In the past, I had like Stewart Family Foundation. We have stuff on PBS. Like it's like we've been blessed to be able to be nurtured and mentored and discipled towards 
something that is bigger than any one individual and way and it transcends music and art it's about the creative space and what you can do with the creative space as a platform and that's what people are gonna see next year now i will be uh-huh opening for samara joy on december 12th uh- so my dad and I are opening for Samara. We're, we're, we're opening for Samara Joy. Mm, I can just hear it. Yeah. So can, so 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 we're doing that stuff. But but no, I get your point though. How else are you going to really be able to focus and, and message and co- co- coerce coerce all of these entities together to follow your dream and your your goals and your desire for for that creative. Uh, uh, ecosystem that you talk about. I have to ask you though about the book before you go. You're also an author. You've written a book. What's the title? A new holiday. Yes. So I cheated, y'all. Uh oh. I cheated. What I is? Cheated. That doesn't sound like you. Yeah, I cheated. Um, it's not so much that we wrote a book, but we wrote a fi- we 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 made a film. Right. Okay. So in, in the, during the pandemic, we ended up making this film, short film, holiday film called A New Holiday, oh, okay. which is inspired by Thelma Stewart. Yes. It was, and it was like a birthday present for her. Okay. Right. So, so the film that ended up being on PBS was like a birthday present for her because during the pandemic, they couldn't do a big gotcha. celebration. So we made this film, which is it's on YouTube. It's actually really good. When Marsalis is in it. B.B. Winans and Karen Clark Sheard sing oh. one of the songs. Like, it's really good. Like, St. Louis talent that, like, they killed it. So, the script and the way that it is laid out is like a, it was the night before Christmas. Yeah. And so, it's like, this would lend itself very well to being a book. And so, we partnered with um, Dave Stewart the Second's company, Lion Forge, on the illustrations. And so, last year, we came out with a new holiday, the book. Got it. Yeah. It is so I cheated. I didn't like just I didn't sit down and write a children's book. I got you. We went back in and re and we went and th- we took the script and we repurposed for those reasonings. But I'm glad we did. I mean, it's it's a really cool it's a really cool book. Now I do plan on writing a book with my dad. Wow. And a documentary is going to come out. So y- y- you can't sit still, can you? Um, I'm learning that I need to. I, I sit still. I sit That's still. when we hear. We, I sit Yeah, 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 yeah. I sit still. I also know how to hear when I'm moving. And that's good, too. So, so I like to think I know how to hear when I'm moving. But, I mean, I got, I mean, I have eight kids. I have another eight kids that are my. Eight young, and eight. Yeah, 16. Like you my, young, my young adult creatives, like the people that I'm responsible I'm sure. For I, I knew that's where you were um, And my wife's amazing. And so we got great church family. So like the reason, like I get to move the way that I move. Like I'm here right now because I got church family picking my kids up. My wife's at a conference. Like she's, so like, like I I get to do the things that I do because we have a great community of people around us as our, as our, in our, as our ecosystem. And so it allows me the, the, the brain space to gotcha. be able to do stuff. And I've also learned, God has taught me over the last five years, the stuff that I should be doing mm-hmm. and the stuff that I shouldn't be doing. Mm-hmm. And I let go of some stuff okay. that, that was like, that was for a season. It wasn't for, you need to let that go. And, and it's gone. Oh, and when I did, Lord Jesus, it's like the heavens, it's like the heavens opened up. My mind was free and clear. I'm just seeing so like, you know, one of my protégés, Melina Smith, like, She's doing really well and getting on playlists and, and, and finding her footing. Like, I was just started a business with three of my young guys and we're partnering with Maryville. Like, the things that we've done was all about, it was all about, you know, test sampling. And now we're going, well, if I can do it with these 10, mm-hmm. they can do it with 10 more. With 10 more. Each of them. Yeah. They'll just yeah. multiply yeah. Which that. is what's happening because now one of my guys, Paco, who's one of the most talented creatives that I have. Now he's helping me run a program at my son's school okay. where now we have 14 kids who were taken to this whole thing and Maryville curriculum and leadership development. It's called M1 Academy. They're learning about, you know, financial stewardship. I mean, it's, that's why I'm like, when I start talking about stuff, if you, pe- people will hear it in isolation and not see how it fits in the map, 
And it's like, oh, okay, so you're doing that too. Oh, and you're doing that too. And it's like, yeah, but it's all within the same goal, plan, strategy, and structure. There's so many questions I have. I they mean, can edit. We can edit. Okay, we like, can edit. We can okay, edit. Okay, okay. We'll just now, take the there, best stuff. Go, go ahead. Based on everything you've said to me today, I'm thinking, where did this author or writer get this impression but in an article in in the newspaper he says that the singer has tasted promising opportunities only to experience disappointing letdowns and in 2011 you were quoted quoted as saying i was done does that mean what oh i was done I had a failed tour in 2010, house was in foreclosure, living in my friend's basement. And I was, and from that standpoint, I was done with music. I was going to do something else. Two things happened. My dad, who had lost the most money investing in my tour, he, he, he worked at Ralston, uh, Nestle. That's where he, he did his career work and went to lunch. And he basically was like, it's not, you know, I'm not worried about the money. I'm concerned about you. And maybe you should because i said and i told him i'm done i'll dig ditches i'll do something else because i'm still working at the symphony at the time I'll, I'll do full time that he's like well maybe it's not what you're doing maybe it's just how you were doing it i think you have a unique favor given to you by god to do what you do the way you do it i wouldn't stop yet okay and then my father-in-law gave me a book called doing business by the good book and invited me to a talk because he worked at Ameren, invited me to a talk with this gentleman named Dave Stewart. And in that talk, he talked about a chapter from his book where his car had been repossessed from the lot and one of his employees had to drive him home. And I was like, okay, okay. Lord, it's not you, it's me. Mm -hmm. I repent, I'm in submission to that. And after that, that uh, the chain of events that happened after that were crazy i ended up deploying because i was in the i was in a military band i ended up deploying which i wasn't planning on doing during that deployment i met the guy who i would sign my first record deal with independently the band that i was went went viral because of the female singer and that's when i learned that i was supposed to be more of a messenger than a musician gotcha and that's like in 2011 that's when the light bulb clicked off and i was like oh Okay. So it wasn't about disappointment. It was about, uh, here's where I'm supposed to be. Not that you were disappointed with what happened. Oh, I was definitely disappointed in what happened. I mean, like, but, 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 you know, maturity and growth yes. and grace is what helps you to see. Yes. I remember sitting, because when the thing happened with the band in 2011, it happened with the female lead singer, Angie. And because they saw this clip of Rolling in the Deep. And they thought that we were just soldiers performing. They didn't know that like we were actually like Air Force bandsmen. That's our job. That's what mm -hmm, we do. Mm -hmm. So it's blowing up online. And like all the attention is on her. And both of us were in a position where we could really use the opportunity. I was really in a position. Because I mean, it wasn't just viral like a little bit. I mean, it was before like the, when, when something went viral, it would capture. Sure. Yeah. And so we were on Ellen DeGeneres, we were on Entertainment Tonight, all this kind of stuff. And what I found is, is like, initially I was like, this is so messed up. Cause like, I'm a better singer, I'm a better performer. Why did this, and, and like the Lord was just like, just humbling me. It's not about you. And I remember the first interview that happened, I sat in the back, didn't say nothing. Just let them talk. From the, once we, once I had that kind of like come to Jesus meeting with myself and with the Lord, and then Angie and I had a conversation where she was like, I think this is going to be great for both of us. And I was like, no, this is for you. This ain't for me. From that moment forward, I became the spokesman. Mm -hmm. Because the one thing I was good at was being able to, was being able to be in an interview mm -hmm. and being able to like give these quick answers. Because yes. when you're in the military and you deployed, you got You can't say where you are. You got to be on script. Sure. You know, hey, we're just out in Southeast Asia. You know, we love what we're doing to be able to do it for these men and women in uniform. It's such a blessing. It's so amazing because they're the real heroes, and we just get to amplify that. Like I was good at doing that, mm -hmm. and so that's what I. 
okay. started to do. And now, flash forward, what am I doing? Doing just that's, that. That's 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 exactly what I'm doing. I mean, I was on the Wayne Brady show in yes. in 2004, uh, 2003. I was on BT Jazz Discovery when I was in college. I mean, yeah. I mean, Diane Reeves was my mentor. Okay. You've, I've I've had these had. I've had all these opportunities, but what I find is that like I was not supposed to take advantage of the. If I would have fully taken advantage of those opportunities, then I think about all of the people right now that I wouldn't be helping. Exactly. Or that I wouldn't be walking with, and I would be a different person. Gotcha. Because of that. I'm a better husband. I'm a better father. I'm a better discipler. I'm, I'm, I'm better because those things didn't work out the way that I thought they should work out. And now I'm actually getting to do all that stuff. And that's a message for everyone about all each of our lives. We, oh, yeah. We have to look at it like that. Yeah, yeah. Don't get tripped up on the timing. Yes, you know. That's why I said at the beginning that you have an amazing story and you are still crafting that story because it seems like you're continuing to build and we're anxious to see Brian in 2024 and just what that means and what yeah. his leadership means for future leaders. It's going to so, be interesting. Okay. You're going <laughs> to keep us abreast? You're going to keep oh, yeah, us a, you know. apprised of what's going I'll on? I'll let you know. But if things work out the way we think it will work out, we won't, you'll know. I understand. I understand. Well, it has been truly an honor and a pleasure to sit and talk with you. I know the first time I ever heard you, you were singing with the chancellor at the, of the University of Missouri, oh, yeah, St. Yeah, Louis, yeah, yeah, yeah. at their annual Christmas uh, concert or fundraiser. And I was like, the chancellor was paying attention to this this young man. Dang, he can sing. And and then also there's there's more than just singing in you. It's also a peer that's working. And I hope so. And we appreciate that. We, I'm glad you recognize it as that. What? <laughs> that it's working up there. Yeah, it is. You know? It is. It definitely yeah. is. Your story is 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 brilliant. Um, it continues to evolve, and you have um, our best wishes for much success and anything we can do. We, we're here. Okay. Keep doing what you're doing. We re remember that. Our guest, Brian Owens, thank you so much for being a part of our conversation. Go on, go on. Uh -oh. We out. <laughs>
Shabbat shalom.